Welcome back to the Warehouse Podcast. My name is Jesse. Before I get into this episode, Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games. Think you know your stuff? Get in on our $200,000 mega contest. And pick five games against the spread every week for your chance at weekly prizes and a share of $200,000. When the game's over, head on over to the online casino to get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action bet online. The game starts here. All right. So uh, getting into this episode... The Orioles, I think everybody knows, uh, are not playing very well on the field. Uh, A lot of mediocre baseball is happening in Baltimore right now. The Orioles did just drop two out of three to the surging Detroit Tigers, who are making a push for the wild card, the final wild card spot in the American League. And uh, yeah, so the Orioles dropped two out of three at home to the Tigers. Um, So it's been some not great baseball overall for uh, the Orioles, uh, which has been uh, really depressing to watch uh, and has made, uh, you know, a lot of uh, fans nervous uh, heading into the playoffs uh, for what the Orioles fortunes will be once we get there. Uh, The really a really big uh, negative component for the Orioles for this team is just as Tyler talked about in his last episode, uh, the horrendous offense uh, that has taken place uh, basically for several months at this point. And uh, yeah, it's been really bad, really difficult to watch. Um, And, but uh, in this episode, I'm going to talk about something a little different uh nothing extremely extremely uh earth shattering uh i guess is a good word to say in the orioles uh in the orioles world but there was sort of a big decision that was made um now arguably it depends on sort of you know how big is conceptualized but um the orioles uh on um Yeah, the Orioles recently on uh, September 15th uh, decided to DFA uh, Cole Irvin. uh, And uh, on the 16th, uh, he was claimed off of waivers by the Minnesota Twins. uh, So the Orioles no longer have Cole Irvin. Now, the Orioles did uh, do a sim make a similar move back on uh, June I'm sorry, July 30th, um, where they DFA'd Colt Irvin back then, but at that time, nobody picked him up off waivers, and he was able to be outrighted to Norfolk. Uh, Flash forward, he came back up and then was DFA'd again uh, recently. So, uh, yeah, just going to break down a little bit about Colt Irvin, what the implications of this are now that he is not a Baltimore Oriole. He's going to head over to the Twins, uh, he's because he was uh, added to their roster in September. The twins are likely thinking about uh, having him around uh, and conceptualizing him for the next couple years rather than this year because he's not even eligible. Even if they wanted to add him, he's not eligible uh, to be added to the twins playoff roster. So um, that's sort of the situation uh, because he was added in September. Uh, so and he wasn't on the roster prior to that. He's not eligible for the Twins' playoff uh, roster. So it's sort of a longer term uh, move that the Twins made to get him, uh, you know, and hopefully uh, from their perspective, hold on to him for the next couple of years. So. So. Thinking about this, uh, basically, yeah. So the Orioles, what did we lose? So obviously we lost Cole Irvin. Uh, We lost him for uh, any contributions uh, that he would have or could have made for the rest of the season uh, in the playoffs. Uh, Although 
definitely with how he was pitching, he was probably not on track to be on the Orioles playoff roster. Uh, but I think more importantly than both of those things, uh, the Orioles lost him for the next couple years. Uh, when uh, the Orioles uh, got him uh, from and acquired him from the athletics, uh, part of what was so appealing about him, even though he wasn't a great pitcher at the time, or he was a, you know, a decent pitcher at the time, uh, was the team control that he had. He had four years, I believe, at the time that we acquired him. And he was a very cheap option at the time. And yeah, the, the Orioles gave up a prospect, a single prospect, uh, to get a pitcher uh, that we imagined would be here for multiple years. Um, so he ended up being here two years. Uh, so uh, the Orioles uh, didn't, uh, you know, made something out of his presence here. And he definitely, uh, over the course of his time here, has made uh, contributions at certain moments for this Orioles team. Um, but, uh, you know, when the Orioles acquired him, they imagined having him uh, perform probably for the Orioles the next couple of years, or maybe uh, if not, maybe to have traded him at a certain point and then gotten something back. Right. Um, and neither of those things are happening. So the Orioles are having him uh, for just basically half the time that they uh, probably hoped or were hoping, uh, you know, maybe when they acquired him, there was some possibility in that in their mind that this moment would come. I think uh, reasonably you would have to expect that this this possibility was a very uh, within the cards, I guess, uh, for the Orioles. But um, I think they were probably hoping when they acquired him, they'd be that he'd be able to stick around the whole time. And that hasn't happened. Uh, and the Orioles uh, couldn't, for instance, make it through this season uh, with him on the team uh, or with at least within the organization and then potentially deal him. Not that he necessarily with how he's been pitching uh, would have been would have gotten much, uh, if anything, a return. Uh, but, um, you know, yeah, that has the Orioles won't get anything really for him. Um, nothing, nothing substantive and, and definitely no prospects. So that's sort of the situation for the Orioles. Um, so what sort of are the implications? Well, for this year, uh, right, like this year, Cole Irvin was not pitching well at all. He has not been pitching well recently, uh, has over a, a, a over a five or a six ERA in his last 15 games. Um, and yeah, he was really, really struggling. And the context for this is sort of the Orioles pitching staff pitching fairly well. Um, so if the entire pitching staff was struggling, maybe the Orioles would have tolerated uh, Cole Irvin not pitching great or would have uh, not been able to... Um, Maybe there would have been other firewalls on the team, for instance, that had been pitching worse than him uh, that had to go sooner. But uh, because the pitching has been good overall and because he's in the unfortunate situation of not having any options, uh, the Orioles made the decision that they, I think, rightfully so, that they had to part ways with him. So given that Cole Irvin was not making any significant contributions uh, for the, or it was not really helping the team at all. Um, it really doesn't impact the Orioles this year. Um, the Orioles uh, wouldn't have had him uh, be any meaningful component. Um, even if he had made the playoff roster, which I think is extremely unlikely given how he's been pitching. Um, he certainly wouldn't have had a starting pitching role and in the bullpen, uh, it would have been extremely, extremely limited. He would have been probably the last guy the Orioles went to, or he would have been the guy the Orioles went to if they had been either up, uh, or probably if the Orioles had been losing 
eight to nothing in the seventh inning of the game. Maybe at that point they would have put Cole Irvin in to eat up some innings so they could save the rest of the bullpen. But other than that, he really wouldn't have made any contributions uh, this year in the postseason for the Orioles. Now, if Cole Irvin was pitching his best, there is a scenario where Cole Irvin could have been on the playoff roster, could have pitched potentially two innings, uh, you know, maybe our starter goes three or four and then Cole Irvin comes in. Uh, they match him up with uh, certain guys in the lineup or the bottom of the order and he throws a couple innings. Right. Um, so that in the best case situation would have been where he might have been able to have fit in for this Orioles team. Uh, but with how he's pitching now, there was certainly no possibility of that. So it doesn't really affect the Orioles this year, I think, really at all. Uh, I don't think the Orioles have to worry about that. And I'm going to talk about him uh, in a minute as well. But uh, as far as Cade Povich goes, I think Cade Povich is sort of the guy the Orioles are looking at to sort of fill a similar role to what Cole Irvin would have done if the Orioles make the playoffs. So I don't think Povich will have a uh, will be a starter in the playoffs. Uh, but I do think that, um, you know, he might, he might in very uh, particular situations. Uh, now, if the Orioles get swept in two games, right, uh, it's very possible that Povich won't, won't pitch in the playoffs and, you know, that'll be it. Um, but if the Orioles win a series, uh, then, of course, it's it's probable that we would see someone like Cade Povich pitch uh, when we get around to the postseason at some point in some capacity. So I think that we have Cade Povich that is going to fill a similar role to what uh, Cole Irvin would have done. Now, how does it impact the Orioles the next couple of years? And I sort of have a similar answer. I think the Orioles can derive a lot of comfort in letting uh, Cole Irvin go uh, because we do have Cade Povich that is going to fill a similar role. Now, as the Orioles have demonstrated this year, right, with all the injuries the Orioles have had, Depth is always, always an important and critical, critical component of a baseball team and of a successful Major League Baseball team and organization. And that is certainly true. And Cole Irvin provides that depth for the Orioles. So in some sense, uh, right, there is a depth factor that the Orioles are losing by not having uh, Cole Irvin on the team anymore and having him for the next two years. So that is uh, one sort of drawback that, you know, the Orioles couldn't even get through this year. Uh, even thinking ahead just a little bit, if the Orioles had just survived this year with Cole Irvin on the team, Maybe there's a situation where, like he did this year, he has a really good spring. And even if he struggles sometime next year and the Orioles are in the position to DFA him, maybe he helps us get through two or three months in a starting role. Now, maybe that even that is a little optimistic, but there's a situation where uh, he could have pitched for the Orioles, uh, either as a long man, either as a fifth, fifth, uh, fifth spot in the rotation starter. Um, so it's unfortunate that especially so close to the end of the season, the Orioles did have to lose uh, Irvin. Uh, but with that said, um, I don't think the Orioles are losing two years of Cole Irvin, uh, even from like a depth perspective. Uh, the thing about Cole Irvin, he's definitely one of these guys he is going to either be a long man for the for the bullpen. He's going to be a fifth spot in the rotation starter, or he's going to be somebody who's at Norfolk, you know, and he's going to occupy one of those positions. And over the course of the year, that will change and alternate and he'll sort of cycle through these different situations. Now, Cole Irvin is 
can be a somebody like Cole Irvin can be a really, really important person for an organization. But in order for him to be that person, he his value is dependent upon him having options. He is an inconsistent pitcher. Uh, he is not a guy that is probably going to uh, not struggle for a significant amount of time throughout the season, even if he has two, three good months um, or stretches of time over a two or three month period where he's solid. Um, that's probably not going to last the entire season. And when he's bad, he's really bad. And it's it's going to be really, really hard for a competitive, serious team like the Baltimore Orioles to keep a guy like that around without the ability to send him down to triple a. So that's sort of what you see here with the Orioles is the Orioles are in win now mode. We cannot keep a guy that is putting up a six ERA on our team. Now, if he was in a different situation, I mean, he's on the twins now, maybe he will get different coaching and maybe there will be different assistants and they'll have different analytics that will help him improve his game. However, if he was with a a not as good team, potentially like the Oakland Athletics from where he came, uh, that would be sort of a situation where, okay, even if he's not pitching well, you know, we're going to be able to tolerate for a set period of time, a six ERA. We'll put him in the put him in the bullpen. We'll sort of hide him to the best extent that we can. But we will keep him around because we don't want to DFA him and lose him. Right. So that's sort of not really the situation. And that's not really possible for the Baltimore Orioles now that they're in this situation. So I think that for him to have made any significant contribution for the Orioles the next two years, it would have had to have been like how he has contributed to the Orioles the past two years when he had options, right? Like last year when he had options, right? Um, Going forward, if Cole Irvin doesn't have any options, uh, it's unrealistic, I think, to expect that he would have made it all the way through the end of the two years um, with this competitive team that is aiming for the division, aiming for a World Series, etc. That's just not realistic. And it's even more not realistic when you think about how we have, as I mentioned, Cade Povich sort of adopting a very similar role to what um, Cole Irvin has done for us and for the Orioles. So um, even for the next two years, now, if for the next two years, Cole Irvin could have been a guy with options and he just miraculously had two more options for the following two years that he was with the Orioles, then great. And he would probably stay within, he would stay within the organization for the next two years. We would have him up when he was needed. If he was pitching poorly, he'd be sent back down and that'd be it. And it would be simple, you know, for the Orioles to keep someone like Cole Irvin. Um, But in order for his value to be maximized, he's really a guy that needs options, I think. And uh, the Orioles just are not in a situation to be able to tolerate mediocrity um, and mediocre mediocrity in Cole Irvin's situation uh, might be uh, a generous statement Um, or a a generous description of what his pitching performance and pitching level has been. So, so just reflecting back a little bit. Uh, yeah. I mean, the Orioles gave up, uh, Daryl Hernays, uh, for, uh, yeah, gave up Daryl Hernays, uh, for Cole Irvin, uh, when the Orioles made that swap with the athletics, uh, just a little bit of update on Daryl Horn, Dale, I'm sorry, Daryl Hernays, uh, he's not been doing great uh, with the athletics. Uh, he was optioned uh, on August 26th of this of this year uh, to the Las uh, Vegas Aviators. Uh, he was playing uh, shortstop. Uh, he got a decent amount of playing time uh, at shortstop for the A's, uh, but uh, really struggled offensively. Um, and now he's in AAA. So now... 
granted, uh, Daryl Hernandez is still 23 years old. Um, there is plenty of possibility that he will turn into a decent major league player. Uh, did the Orioles lose the trade? Uh, well, it's very possible that Daryl Hernandez will have the ability to create more value, uh, quote unquote, over the next uh, several years of, uh, you know, during his major league career while he's under contract for the A's, uh, then, uh, Cole Irvin did, uh, for the Orioles. Now the thing with her uh, it sort of speaks back to the infield depth, right. And the Orioles have had a lot of infield depth. Uh, that's sort of why, uh, at that time he was more or less not expendable, but the Orioles were willing to trade him at the time, uh, because the Orioles did have, uh, you know, we have Jackson Holiday at second base now, and even though he's been uh not good uh overall, um, I think it's unlikely that a situation would happen where Daryl Hernandez would overtake him at second base, right? Now, you know, in uh, you know, either a utility infield option or a backup infielder, you know, all those things are possibilities, but uh, I think that uh. So it's possible that uh, Hernandez will, you know, have more or less a decent a decent time um, and a decent uh, career uh, with the A's. Uh, but he clearly is showing that he needs more time uh, to, you know, figure things out offensively. Um, so, I mean, uh, yeah, all that just to say that uh, I even in hindsight, even with assessing where the Orioles are at, um, even seeing where Cole Irvin, uh, you know, has sort of, uh, even seeing now that Cole Irvin is not with uh, the Orioles anymore, uh, he did make uh, contributions for the Orioles, uh, you know, real significant contributions for the Orioles um, during his time here. Now, that was somewhat offset by him having stretches where he was really bad. Uh, but overall, um, you know, he did play a critical role for us at certain moments. So, um, you know, I'm definitely not frustrated about the trade. I mean, in hindsight, it does kind of, it is unfortunate because Hernandez could be a very solid infielder and we got, um, you know, Cole Irvin just for, you know, less than a couple of full seasons of major league baseball. Um, and you know, it, it's not even as close to that. If you look at like the innings he pitched and, you know, all this sort of thing. And, uh, if you look at last year when he was, you know, not on the major league roster, et cetera, but, um, but overall, yeah, that's sort of where the Orioles are at. Um, I, th I think the Orioles, uh, feel pretty good about the, the short-term outlook of the infield. Uh, so I don't think uh, the Orioles uh, front office is, is really kicking themselves over this trade or anything like that, especially given that he did uh, that Irvin did have some bright spots for the Orioles, but it is unfortunate that it sort of ended like this and that, um, yeah, he didn't, he didn't, uh, finish out his time in Baltimore, uh, which is unfortunate. And, um, yeah. And especially, I think it's, uh, even more unfortunate that he ended up being DFA so close to the end of the season where, uh, maybe we could have got another few months, uh, at a bare minimum, uh, of him contributing to, to the team and the organization. So, um, I did briefly mention it, but, uh, you know, there was a lot of excitement in spring training. Uh, it's sort of felt like, you know, he had added velocity. Uh, he had come into spring training throwing harder than he had in the past. So there was a lot of excitement. And, uh, even though he did stay on the major league team for a while this year, uh, it didn't really pan out ultimately in the way the Oriole fans would have wanted. So, um, that is kind of unfortunate, but, um, yeah, just wanted to do this episode to sort of commemorate, uh, yeah, uh, Cole Irvin's time with us to try to give some analysis as to, you know, what the implications are for the Orioles, um, you know, short and, uh, medium, uh, 
I guess, short and longer term, uh, even though two years isn't that that long. Uh, when they get about it from the perspective of, you know, how front offices think about time and stuff like that. But in any case, uh, yeah, I think that uh, here we'll wrap up the episode. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, feel free to follow the show. Give us a five star rating. Please write us a review. You can subscribe to the show over on YouTube. Just type in the Warehouse Podcast and we will pop up. Feel free to comment with any thoughts that you have on our videos. If you want to get in touch with the show, please email thewarehousepod at gmail.com. You can follow us on Instagram and on Twitter at the Warehouse Pod. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you to the sponsor of this episode. This has been the Warehouse Podcast. My name is Jesse and go O's.